Well, this has been a week, both internationally as well as domestically, as well as myself technologically. Thank you for coming along with me today. Apologies for the late release of these uh, lecture slides. And I think when talking about political institutions and conflict, there are a couple of conclusions that I and the literature have reached, but in the discussion in the workshop, I look forward to hearing your take, as well as the links over the course of the semester between democratic institutions in being able to deal with environmental challenges, being able to provide human security for uh, for citizens, as well as interactive effect between all of these in the likelihood of leading to conflict, is this is the start of the discussion about the importance of political institutions. And a lot of the papers that students will write will involve them to a certain extent or not. And one of the questions that I often ask of students when they look at specific topics that are interested to them is to make sure you recognize the potential, even if not the real effect of democratic institutions or autocratic institutions on the outcomes that you care about. Whether or not they um, are interest interesting to your particular question, they could potentially shape the outcomes that you're actually, actually interested in looking at. So we're gonna be coming back to democratic institutions, autocratic institutions later on in this uh, term. And for the workshop, we're gonna be looking at anocracies, those mixed systems in more detail. You'll be able to look in one in a lot more detail in the workshops. So the first uh, conclusion that I took away from this literature is that political change is dangerous. People are more likely to use violence in times of change just in general. Uh, food riots we're gonna be looking at later on or natural disasters, but here political change, uh, either due to the death of a long serving leader, uh, an illness, um, a, a contested election um, or a coup. When the rules are up for grabs, the stakes are higher and the more likely people's cost-benefit analyses could lead them to decide that now would be a good time to seek, um, to seek redress or change in their government. Um, and uh, Regan and Bell, one of the articles for this week, which we're gonna be talking about more about in the workshop, they find that the transition from democracy to autocracy involves a higher risk of conflict than those moving from autocracy to democracy, which is a really interesting and subtle point to make in their, in their paper and one that I think is applicable now as there's been a decade of democratic backsliding, as well as an increase in the trend of conflict that we saw in week one, this transition is particularly tenuous in which you do have increasing autocratic rule leading to violence. Um, and how quickly that changes and the magnitude of the change is also something we'll be looking at. The whole level versus change, this is part of the water, the David Foster Wallace thing and trying to understand, is it how things are now versus how they've changed compared to some point in the past is important to our questions that we ask as well as the effects that we're likely to see out in the world. Second uh, conclusion that I reached is that it's all about the U relationship or specifically the inverted U relationship between democratic institutions and conflict. Um, there is little evidence of a monotonic relationship between democratic democracy and peace. Monotonic would mean it just goes one direction. Either it goes, it, it gets uh, more likely as something happens or it gets less likely. And when you have a change in direction, if a, a horizontal line can go through it more than once, that's considered um, a non-monotonic relationship. And that's basically a technical way of kind of saying that um, kind of like with ethnic fractionalization and conflict in the last couple of weeks, you have this inflection point in which you're likely to see um, more conflict at one stage and less conflict uh, in another given a specific variable. And so for your own interests, think about whether it's how things are versus how they've changed over time, as well as how something changes over its entire range. Might that story be a bit more uh, complex? Number three, um, and Hegre highlights this as well, is spuriousness is a risk when looking at democracy and conflict. It could be something else, and he talks about pre-existing socioeconomic conditions that led to both democracy and conflict. Um, and these conditions he talks about include institutional consolidation, elections, 
negotiations and uh, norms of negotiation and contract uh, contracts and more developed states are more likely to to have a broader resource base that don't depend on either lootable resources or the natural resource extraction kind of like we saw in Turkmenistan. So when you're looking at some relationship between two things, is it something else, a third thing that is actually shaping that relationship? Conclusion number four is, and I keep mentioning these terms over and we're gonna keep coming back to them in this class, is endogeneity a risk. Does democracy cause peace or does peace lead to democracy? And you can make a, a convincing story about both, right? That uh, when there is conflict, leaders often use that as a, as a reason to crack down, to pass like um, legislation to give themselves more power to be able to fight the threat, and that could lead to less democracy, um, as opposed to just democracy lowering the reason, the causes of conflict, as I already talked about before. Uh, other, the third fact, spuriousness, endogeneity, and omitted variables. Is there some other factor that the literature hasn't really conceived of or hasn't been able to measure um, that really leads to this relationship and whether it's a necessary or a sufficient condition. A sufficient means it will happen if you have that factor. Necessary just means it has to be there for it to actually happen. And so again, when we're all when we're telling stories about political outcomes, as I started with those path diagrams in the beginning of today, the ideal is to try to have as simple of a diagram as possible using Occam's, Occam's razor as much as you can. However, sometimes that misses out on some of the complexity. In this class, we have the space and the time to be able to try to draw a simple map, but then try to address all these risks of endogeneity, spuriousness, other fact omitted variables that could be important and try to come up with a coherent understanding as you leave this class of both what the literature has found in the past as well as how you can go out and find solutions to your own questions as you move forward. Uh, and as you move forward, speaking of which, you have a literature review for those students who are taking my class due in a few weeks. If you have any questions, I'm interested to hear about them in the lection quest uh, lecture question um, on Waddle, feel free to ask any questions there or in the poll everywhere poll, the pollev.com forward slash polls. And I'll be making a video about literature reviews as soon as I get all these lecture videos posted. So with that, I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing all my students in workshops. And for anyone else out there, any questions you might have, you can leave them in the comments below. Thank you for your time.